Hi, this is Doug Wolf from Boise State University, and today we're going to take a look at how to create a display by pulling data from a table. So pulling multiple rows and columns of data out of a table and displaying it on the screen, like you might want for um, a pop-up reference page, or you might want for something like a high score list. Okay, um, I have a table here. Um, of Spanish vocabulary. No, I'm not a foreign language teacher, but I wanted to use some fairly real content. And uh, so in the first column, we have Spanish words for various colors. And in column two, we have the English equivalents. And let me show you what happens when we run the game. We have a little title up here that says colores, and we have the two columns of data side by side. So you can see the English equivalents for these Spanish terms. So how do we get it to do that? All right, um, we talked about the table. Let me show you the title is just a simple actor here with a simple display text. The two columns are put together in a similar way. Uh, both of them really just have a display text, uh, but you'll see that I put it inside of a rule uh, that says if uh, game.tabletextready is true, then we go and display the text. And the reason for that is that the code has to go through a bunch of iterations to build the text that's going to go into that actor. And if you, and in theory, if we just use a display text, then the actor should update as we're updating the text as we're building that display and it should all happen very quickly. But in practice, what I found happens is that uh, quite often you either get none of the text or only some of the text displaying, but you almost never get all the text displaying because there's something quirky about the way Game Salad is processing things. And so to get around that problem, I'm using a little flag here. Uh, Game.tabletextready is a Boolean that I've defined over here in the game attributes. Um, and so I use that as a little flag, and when we're ready, then I set it to true so that we do the display text, and then everything works smoothly. Okay, so uh, the column two text is set up in exactly the same way, just um, it's displaying the column two text instead of the column one text. And column one text and column two text are both attributes I've defined as part of the game, as well as counter one, which we'll talk about in a minute. Okay, most of the code that makes this happen is actually in this actor that's off screen. And this actor um, is one that I've just named general code. And I'm using it because the code that we're using is something that applies to both the column one actor and the column two actor. And uh, it doesn't really make sense to put it in one actor or the other. It's really some code that goes with this whole scene. And so I've put it in its own separate off screen actor so that I've got a place that I can park any kind of general code that, that isn't specific to uh, a particular actor. It's just an organizational tip. And it makes it easier for you later on if you're looking for where a piece of code might be. Um, it gives you a, a one place to go for a lot of these general kinds of things. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and pop open the backstage area here so you can see a little bit better. The basic idea behind how we're going to put this together is that we're going to use a code loop to assemble the text. Um, the function that allows you to pull text out of a table only lets you get one cell worth of data at a time and so you have to keep repeating things. You have to go and say I want row one column one, I want row one column two, I want row two column one, row two column two. And that would be very tedious if you had to list all those steps separately. So what we use is a loop. We use the same basic set of code and we just keep repeating it again and again and again. But the first time through we say, let's grab row one, the second time let's grab row two, and the third time row three, and so on until we're done. So the way we do that involves using a, a, a counter and uh, that counter will start at one. We're going to grab those values for row one from the table, and then we'll increment the counter by one. So the counter becomes two, and then we run through the code again, and we 
um, and we grab all the data from row three and we keep doing that, keep incrementing the counter and then grabbing the data from that row of the table. Now, most programming environments have commands for uh, creating loops, but unfortunately, the Windows version of Game Salad does not yet have them. Um, I was actually kind of shocked to discover that about Game Salad. Uh, the Mac version is one version ahead of the, the PC version, and so it does have a loop behavior in it, but there is no loop behavior in the Windows version. But the method I'm going to show you will work for both the PC and the Mac versions. If you're on the Mac version, you can either use this, or if you'd like to learn about the loop behavior, you can save yourself some coding uh, by using that. It, it'll save you quite a few lines of code. And, but it, the principle behind it is the same as what we're going to do here. So, um, so even though GameSalad doesn't give you uh, a loop behavior in the Windows version, we can make our own and uh, just take a little bit of work. So the first code block that we have here um, is just for initializing some variables. So if game time is equal to zero, so if the game is just at the beginning, then we want to set game.counter.one to one. So this is our counter, we're gonna set it to one and set game.table text ready to false. Now those, uh, this step strictly speaking isn't absolutely necessary because you can set those same values when you set up the attributes for the game over here. Um, but I like to do it in the code so that you know for sure, for sure, for sure that you have set them to what you want. And if you want to edit them later, it puts it all there right with your other code. And so you can edit right at that point. And it also, in case you accidentally change something in the, the game attributes, this will set them to what they really need to be. So that's what that is. And I'm going to go collapse that now to get it out of our way. OK, now let's look at the loop. We first need a rule. Um, and that rule is that if game.counter1 is less than or equal to, and then we have this expression over here. And this expression is just using a function called table row count, and that is telling us how many rows are in our table. So if game.counter1 is less than or equal to the number of rows in the table, then we're going to execute some code. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we need to take the steps that we're going to do and put them in what is called a zero timer. This is the way that we get GameSell to keep repeating our code over and over again. A zero timer is just a timer that has been set so that it says every zero seconds do something. And we check the run to completion box. By setting it to happen every zero seconds, uh, what GameSell will actually do is it will just go through this code as quickly as it can. I mean, obviously, it's going to take it more than zero seconds to do something. Okay, so inside this timer, um, then we're going to repeat three things over and over and over. Um, first, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, get the entry for the current row, so whichever row we're working on, first, second, third, fourth row, we're going to get the entry for that row out of the table, and we're going to add it to our text val variable. And then we're going to get the entry for the current row that's in column two, that's this part here. And then the third part is we're going to increment the game counter um, so that we'll grab the next row of data on our next time through this loop. All right, so the way we build the uh, First column of text is that we set this uh, at game attribute game.column1 text to be equal to the following expression, which unfortunately you can't see the whole thing here. Um, but I, I'll quickly run through it and then I'll build it for you so you can see how we build it. So I'm going to take game.column1 uh, text and then I'm going to concatenate it, which means to join it, join a bit of text with another bit of text. That's called concatenating in uh, computer programming. And you use two periods. These two little periods here um, are the operator for concatenating two bits of text together. So we'll take game.column1 text, we'll concatenate it 
with the table cell value from column one for our current row. Okay. And then at the end of the whole thing, we're going to concatenate it with a line break. And this slash slash backslash n is the uh, code for create a new line. So it's like a carriage return character. Um, you can also supposedly use a backslash r, uh, but I have found on the PC version that doesn't seem to work. I think that may be a Mac versus PC difference because um, there are some differences in what Macs and PCs consider to be a valid end of line character. And, uh, and so I think that the Windows side just doesn't like the backslash r. Um, and again, I use little concatenation symbols and we enclose that in quotation marks because it is a text string. And the quotation marks tell GameCell that it's a text string as opposed to some bit of code or something. So let me build this for you so you can see um, how we do that. So I'm going to take our variable and I'm going to add to it. So each time we go through, we're going to take the variable, we're going to add something onto the end of it. So we take column one text. Oops. Hang on to that. Yeah, it gave me two copies. Okay. I'm going to take column one text, and then we need to come back here and oh, and we need the two dots for concatenation. Okay. So we're going to join it with the next thing. And we're looking for a function that's called table cell value. Okay, and table cell value needs to know what table it's supposed to get its values from. So that table is under here, under game, and it's called Spanish vocab. And I'll have to scroll over here. And then it needs to know what row of the table. And remember for the row, we're using the uh, counter. So game.counter1 is the row number that we're going to use. And then the column, well, this is the text from column one, so I just need to put a one here. Okay, and then to keep from having all the text just all appearing in one single line, I need to put a line break between. So that's my concatenation symbol again, two periods. Open quotation mark, backslash n, and close the quotation mark. Okay. And then the text for column two is set up basically the same way, um, except that we're using the column two text. And, uh, and inside the expression, when we're grabbing the table cell value, we're going to be grabbing it from column two rather than from column one. And everything else about it is the same. And then finally down here, we just add one to game.counter.1. Okay, so the way this works then is that um, when we first go through this, game.counter.1 is equal to 1, which is less than or equal to the number of rows in our table. So we come down into the timer, and it will go and uh, uh, add the first entry to column 1 text, add the first entry from column 2 to the column 2 text, and then we increment game counter, so we add 1 to it. And uh, so game counter one now becomes uh, equal to two. Okay, that still fulfills our condition. It's still less than the number of rows. So we go and we do this again. And, but this time we're grabbing game.column1 text, which will have, if we look at our table, it will already have Roho in it. And then we will add the next entry to it because we'll be now looking at row two, which will add Anaranjado to it. And the same thing for the column two text. And then we increment this to so that it becomes game.counter one becomes three. And we keep going through until we've gotten through all eight rows in the table. And after that eighth row, when we add one to our counter, it now has a value of nine. And so we get up here to this statement. If game.counter one is less than or equal to, well, it's now equal to nine, which is not less than or equal to the number of rows in our table now greater than. So we're not going to do what's in the do part. We instead drop down to the else part of the code. And down in the else part of the code, we just set that flag that I had game.table text ready to true. And then that goes and tells my other actors that display the text that now is the time to display the text. 
So let's just take one more look at how that runs. Now, one last detail. Um, the reason that I used the number of rows in the table up here as opposed to just simply typing in an eight because I have eight rows in my table is what happens if I add more data to my table? So let's say I add two rows and add Rosado, which is pink, and Marron, which is brown. Okay, and now let's go ahead and run the game. And you'll see everything adjusted it itself. I didn't have to go in and mess with my code at all because the code is, it knows how many times to run through the loop based on how many entries are, how many rows are in the table. And we could go back and we could delete these two rows. And we can run the game again. And we're back to what we had before. Okay, so that is how you can pull text from a table to create a display and how to use loops to do that. Um, I will post a copy of this code up on the course site for you. And if you have any questions, please let me know.